welcome to the thematic talk session from local to global, regional support for Hong Kong startups and Entrepreneur Day 2020. The session will begin soon and will be conducted in English without simultaneous interpretation services. 欢迎各位出席创业日二零二零嘅闯出香港，面向国际，探索环球初创机遇。论坛即将开始，并将以英语进行，不设即时全译服务。During the session, you're welcome to raise questions through the Q&A box next to the video frame. Selected questions will be asked at the Q&A session later. 論壇期間，大家可以隨時喺直播畫面旁邊嘅 Q&A 位置提問。我哋將會喺陣間嘅答問環節代為發問。Startup opportunities are everywhere, and no matter where you locate, you will be interested in entering the Asian market, one of the fastest-growing regions in the world. Today, we're leading you on a tour to explore opportunities in Thailand, Japan, and Korea for your company. Without further ado, let's welcome Ms. Jacqueline Cho, co-founder and director of the Entrelink, to share the latest trends and development of startup ecosystem in Asia. Jacqueline, please. Thank you. Thanks for having me at this HGTDC Entrepreneur Day 2020. Happy to be here to share. I'm here today representing Entrelink, a nonprofit organization I'm part of for startup founders, focusing on four avenues. Advocacy for policy change, enabling inbound and outbound opportunities for market expansion and collaboration, raising awareness, raising public awareness on the new economies, nurturing and inspiring young talent to participate in the development of new economies. We represent over 10 different industries in our organization um, from agricultural tech, healthcare, energy, life sciences to fintech and technology services. Without further ado, um, we're here to present our findings from the startup index that we uh, conducted during August to December of 2019 and perhaps have a discussion about our views about uh, the Hong Kong startup scene post protest and uh, COVID-19. So here I'd like to acknowledge um, our research partner, the University of Hong Kong Social Science and Research Center, our advisor PwC, and uh, the Trade and Industrial Organization Support Fund, um, and all our supporting organizations. So our index um, uh, has three key elements. We have startup opinions, uh, corporate opinion, and we also conducted desktop research. Um, and we offer insightful areas in the funding availability of the government, funding availability of the private sector, non-cash support of the government, talent availability, industry connections, and insight on startup ecosystem and culture, and also um, pilot testing availability for startups. So um, we gathered opinions, startup opinions from a total of 279 participants, um, most of them being in the pre-seed and seed round. Um, but we have um, participants, uh, uh, interview participants in, in different areas as well. Um, and the index participants uh, mainly uh, focuses around computer technology, health and medical, fintech, biotech, hardware. These are the uh, different industries being represented. And then we also surveyed cities across Asia. Um, uh, Bangkok, Beijing, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Macau, um, and all these uh, different cities in Southeast Asia. So um, we, uh, we can see from the chart that about a third of the respondents have related activities and, and exposures in Shenzhen. And in addition to Hong Kong with Singapore and Guangzhou, Taipei and Tokyo next in line, indicating that these cities uh, welcome foreign collaboration and have similar startup ecosystems and collaboration support as Hong Kong for a Hong Kong startup to feel comfortable and expanding its efforts there. Um, compared to 2018, startups view Seoul and Taipei as increasingly popular regions to start expanding their business. Surveys showed that it was mainly due to the increase in government initiatives and increased external marketing of these new initiatives are what is attracting foreign startups to expand to start businesses in these areas. Probably something that Hong Kong can learn much from in terms of marketing to increase competitiveness in the region. We can deduce here that the startups interviewed 
of the Singapore, Shenzhen, Taipei, Shanghai, Beijing as high performing startup hubs with Hong Kong, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok and Macau being on the lower to underperforming for the number of following reasons. Um, we can see here from the results matrix table um, and, and this is the breakdown of the scoring. Even though Hong Kong remains the highest percentage in terms of the ease of and choice of opening a new company, um, funding availability from the private sector, uh, talent availability and pilot test openness remains low scoring. Um, we can arrive to the conclusion startups feel it's hard to convince private investors to invest in their companies um, as they're traditionally very uh, conservative, as well as them being able to use technology that are homegrown and government lacking in creative efforts to push talent, uh, increase in talent quality from the universities and beyond. So here's the results of the heat map analysis. Um, we can see that for Hong Kong, uh, um, funding availability of the government uh, seems very high. Um, uh, business regulation seems stable, although after July 1st, with our national security, with the launch of our national security law, that might be a little bit in jeopardy. And then we can also see that funding availability in the private sector, as well as talent quality and availability um, and uh, pilot test availabilities remain very low in Hong Kong. So um, PwC served as our advisor in this index and helped us engage in some corporate case studies in order to give us a brief overview of the willingness to involve startups in corporate businesses. The following industries were engaged, uh, namely real estate, insurance, transport, banking and financial services and professional services. The corporate takeaway is that there are, seems to be improvements in business units uh, as business units learn more about startups. Uh, periodic communications between business units and startups are increasing. Um, the corporates uh, demonstrate the benefits of including pilot runs um, in their business units. And then um, they're also expediting uh, results through collaborations with startups. Um, there's also the idea of solution crowdsourcing. Um, so uh, solutions don't have to come from one source. Uh, corporates are creating more client-centric solutions. And then corporates are also offering strategic investments in areas of future develop of their future development by learning more about the startup scene. Um, so the corporate views of the local startup ecosystem and highlights from these interviews are as follows. In general, Hong Kong seems uh, to have a, a mature regulatory framework and government is encouraging an adoption of technologies in particular sectors like fintech and insurtech. The key thing to note here is that although there might be a general acknowledgement and change in way in the businesses like finance are conducted, uh, startups looking to make inroads in this area, uh, their technology, although on the forefront, may not make it to qualify past regulatory bodies as they are not supported by characteristics of a corporate body, such as global offices, having employees over 5,000 people and revenue numbers which leads us um, to some of the suggested improvements from the interviews, one being in areas enabling uh, data sharing across Hong Kong and mainland China. For example, voices from the biotech and healthcare sectors have indicated that with a small population like Hong Kong, uh, samples and medical health records retrieved may not be, be at scale enough to further R&D. Uh, with enabling data sharing across mainland China, Hong Kong startups can reach that scale in understanding sample and population sizes of their targeted research and thus taking bigger strides in R&D efforts for their business. Um, the third point, um, there seems to be recycling, a, a recycling effect of the same types of talent amongst the technology industry, meaning that there could be a step up uh, in more um, imported um, talent to facilitate shared new uh, knowledge and increase know-how in the local ecosystem. Uh, Hong Kong employment rate remains very low, sitting at two to three percent over the past years. So as workforce is fully utilized, the quality of talent is not likely to increase and improve to a global standard just organically. Um, and the main sticking point of uh, imported talent seems to be the cost of living um, as a barrier for inclusion. 
Uh, the last point is that the collaboration between Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area is seen as more cosmetic um, efforts in creating successful champions of startups and small businesses for uh, the, the the Greater Bay Area is something Hong Kong startups are curious about. Um, some guide and handholding knowledge exchange uh, would be appreciated all around. Um, so the key takeaways um, for our startup index seems to be Hong Kong remains the top performer in terms of stability of business regulations, although now that's being uh, questioned. Um, and uh, talent and pilot test availability remains a weakness in the eyes of local startups um, because uh, uh, there's no import of new talent um, there, and, and uh, people are conservative in terms of pilot testing. Um, and industry connections and support is important. Seoul has caught the eye of many startups um, in Hong Kong as an ideal place to start um, their, their expansion of new business. So here um, I'd like to, um, We'd like to share a little bit about post-protest. So we, we've been talking a little bit about our index that was uh, concluded before um, the protest ended and uh, before COVID-19 hit. Uh, so Hong Kong has been plagued with the protests since February 2019 on the extradition law. And it's been around seven months since COVID-19 had officially broke out in this city and eventually globally. Um, as we're stepping into the third wave uh, in, in Hong Kong today, it looks like there are no ends in sight, but to hope for a vaccination that will probably catch up to the mutating nature of the virus as time goes on. Back to normal seems rather distant. Startups and corporate companies are now adjusting to the new normal, which is shaping as we speak, uh, mainly being in a wait and see mode. Um, as of today, we'd like to highlight a few key takeaways. Um, Internet, uh, number one being internet freedom. Um, the sweeping national security law that came into effect on July 1st, just a few weeks ago of this year remains vague in legislation. While the law doesn't speak, uh, doesn't specifically target technology companies, um, there is a chilling effect on people trying to understand and go about their future plans on the internet while understanding the national security law implement, uh, implications. There are signs of self-centered censorship, for example, on social media. Uh, platforms and content publishers are doing the same as it is unclear if their views fall under the breach of the law. Uh, we've also seen Google, Facebook, and Twitter suspending and pausing data, data requests from authorities and TikTok recently pulling out of Hong Kong. Number two is uh, data control. So Hong Kong uh, is uh, being a little less attractive uh, for global tech companies with China's data review policies and when the law overrides the original legal system. Um, Hong Kong also had a growing popularity as being a top data center in the APAC region because of its position as a conduit to mainland and, and Southeast Asia. But now um, it's a kind of wait and see mode. Um, number three is um, startup hopes. So uh, there is there is a there is hopes that there is a speeding up of the uh, Greater Bay Area initiatives to learn uh, for Hong Kong startups to expand to the neighboring cities and those in the Pearl River Delta. Um, and number four is the decoupling of the spillover. So there's a rift between U.S. and China right now, and it's undermining effects on Hong Kong's autonomy. Um, fears and uncertainties are uh, suspension of exports and technologies to the city, mainly um, recently China Mobile losing some access uh, to some IBM data software. Uh, so that the worry in, in Hong Kong is that it has lost its special status, giving way for uh, perhaps giving way for alternative, to, alternative technologies to blossom here uh, under the new rule of law. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for having us um, and, and for sharing um, our overview on, uh, on, on the, the ecosystem in general. Thank you, Jacqueline, for the insightful sharing. Next, may we invite Mr. Narusan Danvajo, Head of Investment of InnoSpace Thailand, to share about how digital transformation of different industries in the country has brought new opportunities to startups. Please welcome Narusan. All right. Uh, good. Good morning. And so, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to give you a short introduction 
about InnoSpace Thailand. So InnoSpace Thailand uh, has been set up to elevate and support all the Thailand startup ecosystem aligning with the government digital economy policy here. Uh, actually, we form with uh, 14 limited partners where they are key conglomerates in various industries in Thailand. This is to make sure that we can support and drive Thailand digital innovation to the right direction in, in our country. Um, just would like to update you a little bit uh, about the current situation in Thailand right now. While Thailand has been successful in stemming the tie of the COVID-19 first wave infections right now, uh, this is actually doing over the last three months. So we have to admit that the Thailand economy is expected to be impacted severe, severely by this pandemic. Uh, since we, you know, in Thailand, we have a uh, last exposures from interna international tourism and uh, export oriented trade as a key GDP contributors. That's, that is uh, the Thailand situation right now, but uh, I think right now we are in the east of the, you know, action from the government to is all the business to be back into normal. Uh, the, all right, so, uh, but in this crisis, uh, I think Thailand has seen a new potential S-curve for our country. The expectational strain of the country, healthcare system and medical industry can be further justified and drive our country towards one of the world's top medical hubs. Uh, combined with the reputation of Thailand's skill of medical professionals and the consultations, I think these are the key factors that could draw a large number of visitors to Thailand's healthcare and wellness tourism industry after the outbreak. Uh, that, that is what we uh, recover and, and see all, all the economic impact after the outbreak. However, the medical and health technology in Thailand is uh, we have to be that is in the initial stage. Hospital and medical institutions start, you know, offering healthcare and digitized process and technology. AI and the big data technology play a big part to assist with and improve medical consultancy diagnosis and overall services to shorten the time and the contact between the patient. Um, this is uh, all around that all the medical and telemedicine is, is coming into the new business normal right now. Uh, I think these are the challenges that, that we face during the economic recovery, uh, such as the capital change, the tech talents that we need to improve, uh, the market you know, outlook will be changed, the operation and the policies will drastically change as the next normal of the business. Nevertheless, uh, I think there are some few positive impact from Thailand business, such as the rise of the e-commerce and digital payment, the disruption of the country shutdown, also giving the technology adoption from Thai people that I think increasingly improved uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the Thai people and the end customer were adopted the, the technology uh, of the you know mobile application or the web-based application all around the nation. Also, the business providers in the market has been exploring the digital process and workflows throughout this pandemic. Um, uh, having said that, uh, we experience we call it the next normal of our business with these key six industries, as you can see in the screen. Uh, the first one is a uh, digital, the financial sector. Uh, the financial sector, we have seen and experienced the growth of contactless payment and digital customer service uh, on the spotlight, as well as the banking as a service platform uh, that comprise with the uh, advanced blockchain and AI engine to help you know, the commercial bank to make a decision process shorter. Uh, the second one is, I guess, the food and the consumer product is the food delivery platform pops up from the existing player and the venture building players, uh, preventive healthcare food with a planetary health diet will be on the rise of the serve the new normal of the customer. The third one is the energy sector. I think uh, what we can see from from now is the awareness of the ESG after the pandemic will be another factor of energy player with the 
So basically, uh, the pro all the provider and the businesses concerned on the you know cost optimization and energy we were one of the key factor of that. So the energy effective efficiency monitoring control distributed energy, including the accessibility of energy to serve the upcoming IoT and the smart device in Thailand will be on the spotlight. Uh, the fourth one is the health sector, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, telemedicine, you know, all, all, all the thing comprised of the remote patient monitoring were rapidly adopted by Thai people during the COVID situation, as well as the development of the smart health device to, you know, monitor, uh, during the, the, the pandemic sessions. Uh, the travel and the transport is, uh, is the biggest industry that have been impacted by the, this pandemic. So a big hit for Thai economics. Uh, travel industry is you know, interconnected with several businesses like safety, security, hygienic contactless service are the key focus for the next normal in Thailand to boost the domestic consumption during this period why we will focus on the medical and wellness business in the future like i mentioned earlier that uh, in this pandemic we, we can see the opportunity to to bring thailand into the uh, medical and wellness business hub in the future um lastly the enable technology I, I guess to update of you guys with the 5g ability in this year iot smart devices you know kind of this stuff will be on the radar for big business Supply chain in the world will be uh, highly innovated, will be play a more important role with the people giving the priority of health and safety over the privacy during this pandemic. So I guess this is all the transforming industry and the next normal opportunity from, from the various industry in Thailand that I would like to share. Uh, the, and having said that, I, I guess what from our analysis uh, with from our team is uh, you you can have any opportunity with the you know space and and to enter the Thai market right now. Uh, I guess the these twelve key factors is uh, your key takeaways. If we can have the investment or the services or any collaboration with the you know Thai government in those space or from Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, uh, we are very welcome. Because, uh, like I said before, I, I guess all the startup in Thailand is stuck in the early stages, and we need the funding opportunities, more of that. And these are the key twelve uh, prospect opportunities within the space in the future. So, uh, the first one is the genomic and innovation or biotechnology that uh, we would like to explore more from the deep tech and the search to the market startups or something like that. Uh, food and planetary health, diet technology, medical and wellness tourism and hygiene, uh, agriculture technology, of course, is still on the radar because, you know, a uh, majority of the, the Thai people are, are still on the agricultural businesses. Uh, food supply chain connectivity, the hygiene, the food production, uh, the food logistic that uh, will make our life uh, healthier and uh, to gain trust back from the end customer will be another strategic one. Uh, zero waste and waste to value technology, uh, manufacturer supply chain enabler. Uh, right now we need some more innovation because uh, right now I think the businesses in, in, you know, in the world is global, is a global supply chain and that, that what we are looking for to improve for all of us. Uh, the IoT smart device on integration uh, health and medical innovation devices are, are in the our government focus point. Uh, ESG carbon reduction technology, big data, AI technology. We still need all the tech talent and more of the advanced uh, data analytics skills. And of course, the last, lastly, the one that is the vaccine solutions for all of us to pass this uh, pandemic together. So. I guess this this would be all from us today, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this event. So, uh, I hope to, to keep in touch and discuss the next step with everyone to drive Thailand as an innovation hub in the future. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Narusan, for your sharing. Next, we will invite uh, Ms. Right. Nico Takano, Investment Promotion Specialist of Dreadtro Hong Kong, to share about their startup's landscape in Japan and acceleration initiatives by the government. Please welcome Nicole.
Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Nicole Takano from Jetro, Hong Kong. Thank you for having me on this forum today. I'll be introducing the surroundings of startup, um, surrounding startups in Japan and uh, how Jetro can support you today. Um, Jetro is a government funded organization in Japan. We promote trade and investment between Japan and the rest of the world with our global and domestic offices. One of our focuses is to promote um, foreign direct investment into Japan. For the last 15 years, we have worked um, with close to 20,000 projects supporting foreign companies. In the recent years, we have been focusing on supporting companies with innovative ideas, businesses, and startups. Now, um, this model shows a concept of an ecosystem. The left is the uh, social issues, and uh, a startup is born into the existing system, and then out onto the existing Use this model to evaluate major startup cities in the world and uh, to see the characteristics of the each ecosystem. When we look at the Tokyo through this model, which is at the initial globalization stage, we see uh, quite a strength, particular strength in business environment where social infrastructures and the government initiatives and uh, other academic institutions are some of the factors. Other areas are also improving and showing promising signs. In terms of entrepreneurship pool, a study shows over 2,500 ventures and startups were born out of um, Japanese universities in 2019. This has been a consistent upward trend for the last five, five years or so, and this shows more acceptance and ease of doing business for ventures and startups in Japan. For the opportunity angle, in 2018, there were over 50 accelerator programs in Japan, covering a wide range of geographical and uh, vertical fields. Funding wise, um, in Japan, if it, um, last year, there was 276.5 billion Japanese yen worth of deals done for about 1,700 deals, transactions last year. And about 20% of the uh, money went to, um, into overseas companies. When we look at the startup landscape in Japan, we see both private sector and public sectors, and also the collaborations between them as well. From the, for the investor side, the total investment was double, has doubled uh, between 2015 and 2019, and it's still growing. Co-working space plays a large role in the life of startups. For example, WeWork entered Japan in 2018 and quickly expanded to 37 locations across Japan. That goes to show the, uh, the demand and the potential of the market. And many others are in the market. Japanese universities are also recognizing the potential of startups. Reputable universities like Tokyo universities, Kyoto University, um, offering startup education. Some are setting up their own venture capital company uh, or incubation program to support their graduate ventures. And uh, on the topic of um, investor side and accelerators, there is a wide vertical range. Some local governments are entering this field, targeting a particular geographical objectives to entice uh, more startups coming to their area. Big name foreign operators are also in the market, such as 500 startups, Get In The Ring and ILS, to name a few. Now, the government, Japanese government is also recognizing the importance of the sector. I would like to um, make you aware of some of the initiatives. The first one is announced by the Cabinet Office in 2019. 
regarding strategies um, for creation of startup ecosystem in Japan. Um, they have laid out these seven strategies uh, to improve the startup environment in Japan, aiming to compete with the world's top ecosystem cities. Creation of startup cities, the Japanese government is to designate, designate a startup city, uh, uh, a few startup cities across Japan to concentrate their support and the resources for startups and uh, attract more overseas talent. These strategies are also followed up by a number of underlining um, regulatory tax change programs or initiatives at the national government levels, ministerial levels, and local government levels. The second initiative is about promoting open innovation, where multiple organizations work together to develop ideas, expertise uh, into new idea service business models. Um, we have started seeing and quite a few examples of this in Japan. For example, a Finnish company working with the city of Sendai up in north of Japan to uh, work on the disaster prevention area. Or in Fukuoka, a Canadian transport startup working with a local um, transport company to run a utilizing AI for their bus systems and so forth. And also a number of open innovation challenge or competitions has been um, organized by the country, the national government or private companies in recent years. And some led to a permanent platform to form collaborations between um, public sectors and startups like this uh, Urban Innovation Japan website. Now, from a statistics, about 70% of startups look to Tokyo for their base in Japan. But other cities, other areas of Japan also offer quite um, sizable economies and support on their own. Just to give you an example, just to give you an example, um, I'll talk to three cities where the uh, profile in the startup scene is rising in Japan. Now, Osaka, and also Aichi, where Nagoya is the capital, and the Fukuoka. Osaka city government opened Osaka Innovation Hub in 2013, and it has been organizing 250 uh, matching and uh, uh, pitching events a year. The Osaka pre prefecture and also city government are working together to offer all Osaka support and aiming to get the startup city acquisition from the government. The Aichi has its own startup strategy set up in 2018, and uh, uh, this area has a strong presence of industries, including automobile, AI, and Internet of Things, as well as a collaboration agreement among the technical colleges and uh, uh, universities around the area. Fukuoka set up in 2012 its own um, startup Fukuoka strategy and uh, <clears throat> working to build solutions, um, suitable environment for networking and demonstrative experiments for startups. They turned an closed school site into a startup hub called Fukuoka Growth Next and offer support menus and uh, um, support menus to gross stage startups. It is also one of the special zones where overseas startups can apply for startup visas. These are some of the schemes which you would potentially benefit from as a startup. Uh, there are lots of government support and center programs and uh, this goes on, but uh, please come and talk to us if you have, if you want to know which is the best area for your business to start in Japan. And also Startup Visa is a uh, scheme to relax regular business manager visa requirement. If you are a foreign entrepreneur go to, going to Japan, you can apply, you can set up a business in one of these areas and uh, you can stay up to one year to start your business. 
and also many incentive schemes are available in the form of tax incentives or bis business cost subsidies. And there is also a new innovation tax incentive program that um, gives uh, investors a tax break of up to 25% of investment into startups in Japan, which is a good news for the funding side. And also we have regulatory sandbox framework in place, um, which has, uh, help you to um, apply. And uh, hopefully without changing the entire laws in Japan, you can establish a new service or a business model. Now, there are lots of events that have been cancelled or affected by what's going on in the world, but these are the, some of the events that we um, Jetro promote, help to promote in the coming year or so. Now, it was a very quick run through, but I hope you get the, um, just a general idea of what's been going on in Japan. And at the Jetro, uh, we support startups with the information, consultation, and other support at no cost to you. Please come and talk to us if you're thinking of Japan as your next place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole, for your sharing. Finally, may we invite Mr. Jonathan Joan, founder and CEO of CNT Tech Company Limited, to join in from Korea to introduce local opportunities for overseas startups. Please welcome Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, I think you have muted yourself. So we can't hear you at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Name of Hong Kong. I am Jonathan, CEO of Sinti Tech. I am honored to be here to share the Korean startup ecosystem and investment experience. Uh, a bit about myself. I'm an entrepreneur, investor, professor, and enthusiastic filmmaker. I'm the competitive uh, streamer and skill lover as well. As an entrepreneur, I've learned the company for 17 years quite successfully. Uh, since 2012, I've invested in over 100 startups. Last year, the Korean government uh, upgraded my effort in investment. I've been granted the presidential citation for promotion of startup investment. With my 17 years experience in CNT Tech, we started with the food tech platform business in 2003. It consists of five main channels, such as contact center, online mobile, cacao, and kiosk. These channels support over 100 clients, not only in Korea, but also globally. Our annual sales volume is approximately 1 billion US dollar. The photos you see here are kiosk from CNT Tech installed in Hong Kong, KFC. Already CNT Tech has our presence in Hong Kong. Based on our successful company operation, we will accelerate over 500 startups since 2012. And among them, we invest over 100 companies and the total amount of our investment is about $10 million. And I am proud and thankful to say we have successfully exit case. Saint Tech was ranked second largest number of investment in Korea last year. Amongst our exit, eight exit cases, I believe you guys may know, Kuket, the Asian number one food culture creation platform is also one of our best reference. Kuket have successfully run business to date. Last year, they earned over $20 million and raised over $10 million funds. Well, those were the introduction of my company and investment experience. Now, I'm going to talk about Korean startup scene. Why Korea? Let's look at the Korean startup scene at the grass. Obviously, Korean ICT and gaming industry is doing well. NC, Line, PUBG. I believe most of you already know that. Plus, 
compensate cacao, Cuba, multi-billion dollar valuation. Even though they will all have each problem to solve, but considerably they are all doing quite well. Moving on to traditional sector, Korean concurrent rate such as Samsung, Hyundai, and LG are also joining the startup scene. Plus, now even global entities like Google, SoftBank, and Tencent are setting their foot in Korea. This proves a point. The Korean startup ecosystem has its potential and running quite well. Due to these multiple factors, Korea was ranked number one in Bloomberg Global Innovation Index. Ah, plus today's COVID-19 situation, I believe Korea is by far one of the safest country in the world. I would invite and welcome you to Korea. Once travel, restriction are more relaxed. If you look at this slide, there are multiple players in the scene. Senti is by far one of the leading players, doing our very best continuously to enhance and power the startup ecosystem. Next, why should international startup, I mean, Hong Kong startup come to Korea? Korea is built in excellent infrastructure for startups such as world's fastest internet speed. 5G was launched in 2018 and huge B2B client of yours like Samsung and LG. They are always seeking for the new technology and solution to apply to their product. Having said that, Korea is also well-organized test path for international startups. Lastly, the Korean government has pursued inviting the leading global tech startup to Korea. On the right side of the slide, there are some excellent programs for you guys. Amongst them, I want to introduce the practical tips for you. Okay, K Startup Grand Challenge. I'm pretty sure that some of you are curious about the K Startup Grand Challenge. K Startup Grand Challenge is global acceleration program to provide excellent overseas startup with the support and opportunities for investment that they need to launch their business in Asia and make Korea as Asia, Asia number one startup business hub. We provide the participant with a fund, free office, space, one-to-one mentorship, and so on. For startups that are less than seven years old or pre-entrepreneur whose representative hold the foreign nationality. Also, we do clear objective, objective to expand into Asia by using Korean market as a stepping stone can apply. Target sectors vary from AI, blockchain, to beauty. But any startup with a brilliant idea are welcome to apply to our program. As you can see this year over 2,600 teams from 118 countries applied for KSGC. Last year, 1,667 teams from 95 countries have applied for the KSGC. For the past four years, the total of 7,402 teams from 155 countries have applied for the KSGC. Considering that we accept 82, uh, 30 to 80 teams each year, the competition is quite intense. This is the overall timeline of 2020 K Startup Grand Challenge. We will provide various advantages to top 60 teams within 3.5 months, such as office space, project space, settlement fund, and price and grant. Here is the process of KSGC 2020. The acceleration program will start from September 1st to November 30th. The final demo day will take place in 9th and 21 November. In the course of acceleration, 
we will provide various mentoring session each month. As I previously mentioned, top 60 teams will be staying in Korea to participate in 3.5 months long acceleration program with various benefits. Besides, we will make sure their visa application is processed in timely manner. This is part of a government OASIS program, organized especially for foreign entrepreneurs. Besides help with the visa insurance, they will also have the access to administrative support, trans translation and interpretation to make sure that they can work conveniently and if, if they, Efficient, effectively while in Korea. These are financial benefit of KSGC 2020. If you get selected as a top 60, you will over rewarded around 10,000 to 15,000 USD. If you pass the final demo day as a top five, you would receive prize the money from 10,000 to 120,000 USD. If you pass final demo day, but not top five, you are still eligible for funding round 10,000 to 15,000 USD. Here are photos of Panjo Slab campus. We have a subway line that goes directly to Gangnam Station. Startup that participated in KSGC 2019 to 2000. 16 to 2019 made astonishing achievement for last four years. The following is just glimpse of their achievement. Okay, this is the end. Thanks again for giving me the honor to introduce the Korean startup scene, myself, my company. I hope in coming future, there will be another chance to show Korean startup scene to Hong Kong and world, and most importantly, having you guys interested in coming to the Korean market. Till then, my best wishes. Stay safe and hope to see you in 2021. Doje, doje. Thank you, Jonathan. May Jonathan please remain online and let's welcome back Jacqueline, Narusa, and Nicole again to join the Q&A session. For audiences, you are still welcome to raise questions through the Q&A box next to the video frame. Okay, so we do have some questions from the floor. So the first one is for Nicole. So the audiences are actually interested that because in your presentation, you mentioned that the Japanese government is offering tax incentives and subsidies to startups. And they're interested in the scope of the scheme and whether do they cover overseas startups or any particular sector do these subsidies cover? Um, Nicole, I think you have muted yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the question. Um, I did, um, uh, it was a very generic statement uh, that there are numbers of uh, many, many different schemes at the very different levels government. And uh, most of them are targeted towards uh, companies in Japan, but that does not exclude foreign funded companies who are established in Japan. So if you set up your own entity, say subsidiary of your head office, uh, sorry, a parent company in Hong Kong, then you'll be uh, entitled to apply for those incentives. Um, so uh, some cities offer more um, startup um, subsidies and uh, say Fukuoka City, for example, um, helps you to pay um, your setup cost and uh, some other cost when you're coming as a first city as a base in Japan. Um, so that is one example, and there are many, many more. And depending on your business sector and what you're trying to do, um, what can be applicable to you very. So if you could just come to us, then we might we'd probably be able to help you um, sorting out that information. 
Thank you, Nicole. I think the audiences will definitely come to Jetro to know more about the subsidy scheme. And the audiences are also interested in whether there are similar examples in Thailand and Korea. Maybe Narusan and Jonathan can help with that. Uh, do your government have any schemes for attracting talents or any subsidies targeting for startups? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, so uh, thank, thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I guess right now our government and the BOI of Thailand has uh, the any like many many promotions for the foreign company to set up uh, the start or SME in Thailand. So so like 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 in other countries. So it depends on your businesses, and there are so many things to to help you with the tax benefits and all the setup. You know. Uh, things uh, and the expenses in Thailand. Uh, I guess right now the, the latest announcement is the EEC, the Eastern Economic Corridor in in our uh, provinces. Uh, I guess they have a very attractive promotion on setup uh, about the manufacturer assembler of the medical devices and, and all that's health related to help the this COVID-19 situation pass very really soon. So I guess uh, it depends on your business. So uh, I think you know Space Thailand can help connect that with those BOI and promotions. So, so you can keep up keep in touch with me and can help all of you guys to do this. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, KSGC is a representative of the Korean Accelerator Program. So the, uh, this program provides the office and uh, uh, some kind of a program and mentoring service. But the uh, most, most important thing, uh, there are many good accelerate, accelerators and venture capital in South Korea. So the many foreign startups will have a chance for getting from, from the Korean Accelerator and uh, venture capital. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is addressing to Jacqueline. So the audiences are actually interested in, uh, in the international relations. So they are asking whether America's overall policy towards China and Hong Kong or China's policy towards Hong Kong affect, affect Hong Kong startups more and why? Oh, that's a, that's a pretty hard question. Um, uh, sorry for the first, for the first question is the American, yeah, uh, uh, affecting... America's overall policy towards China and Hong Kong or only China's policy towards Hong Kong. And the question is, uh, the audiences kind of are interested in, uh, which of the policy actually affect Hong Kong startups more more i think it's equally challenging because unfortunately hong kong is in the crossfire um, uh, between the two countries and so uh it's kind of double whammy just like how um the protests and COVID hit at the same time the instability of uh, politics is uh is this creating a lot of uncertainty on top of the global pandemic. So in, in our opinion, I think it's equally bad. And, uh, and which is why there's so much uncertainty around uh, setting up in Hong Kong, headquartering in Hong Kong. And I hope that uh, with, with more education on the, natural, uh, the national security law and the vagueness of it, I think that uh, people will be, companies and startups will be able to navigate their future plans. But until then, um, I think it remains an unknown uh, uh, for, for the future of Hong Kong startups. It's, it's a really hard time politically. And there's another question also addressing to you. The audiences are interested in you, in you offering tips for overseas startups interested in expanding to Hong Kong and your opinions on whether there are any specific sector that you think is more advantageous to enter Hong Kong, like at the moment? Uh, 
Yeah, at the moment, I think for foreign startups, it would be um, biotechnology. Um, the Greater Bay Area is expanding a lot in healthcare uh, and uh, biotech. So anybody in that area of focus is uh, at a great advantage. I think the same question can be addressed to other speakers, but to your own local country. Like, do you think there are some spe uh, some sectors that should expand to your country? Yeah, maybe we can. Maybe you guys can answer in the speaking order. Like, we can have. Um, do you guys have any? Any insight on this question? Like, do you think there are some sectors that should expand to Thailand or Korea or Japan, like at the moment? No. Okay. Thank you. So, can we can start with Thailand? Uh, I guess uh, all the the AI and the blockchain startup advanced technology about this. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, the sector that we are lack of the the advanced you know tech talent and the startups can can come in and, and see how the business cases in thailand happen and how to use ai and data monetization uh to make to make the the business easier and i think i think th this is our our you know uh, the gap that that we we are looking for uh, the support from 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 the foreign uh, company uh, i think this is for thailand uh, the Korea case is the uh, Korea. There are many the good uh, AI startups, and uh, if the foreign startup uh, come to Korea, there are many chance for gathering the AI data set, and uh, some uh, some startup can uh, uh, make relationship with the uh, uh, core technology about AI uh, the, from some the good uh, startups or the uh, government organization. So if the uh, have the competitiveness over AI. Uh, uh, on you, uh, please come to Korea. And for Japan, um, I think in terms of government service, sort of government's attention is on like um, Internet of Things, blockchain, AI, robotics um, in that area. So that's all very good. But also, if I want to, uh, I particularly want to mention some areas like uh, disaster prevention, social issues. Uh, the resolution. These are the area on the local government levels they're looking for solutions. So I've seen, um, I've introduced you to some open innovate, innovation type of cases. And if you have any technologies or models that solve these problems, I think that'd be very, very welcome. And also the bio and life science area. Uh, there is a good set of companies and businesses in Japan, and it's a big, big, big enough market uh, because of the corona uh, uh, situation, uh, Japan has introduced quite uh, uh, quickly, rolled out this remote um, medicine, uh, you know, uh, what the consultation of the doctors, it's now allowed in many cases. So this type of area would be uh, quite interesting for, uh, for, for them to come to Japan. So thank you all for your time. That was a very inspiring and fruitful discussion, obviously. So coming to the end of this session, please feel free to scan the QR code on the screen to send us your feedback. You may also click on the link below event description under the video frame to fill out the questionnaire. We hope you do enjoy and take the most from the event for developing your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you. So thank, hi, thank you for your time. And our session has officially ended. So you may now leave the room. You may now leave the room. Uh, before, yeah. um, before we leave, uh, uh, is it possible that I can get your contacts? Uh, Ms. Takano and Ms. Narusan, as well as Jonathan.